So I've had a lot of requests uh, from viewers asking me to talk about bond ETFs and how you know I can use bond ETFs to hedge my portfolio during a potential recession in 2023. So again, what does hedging mean? Hedging means that if there's a recession and the value of your stocks fall temporarily, but if you own bonds, then your bonds will go up in value and kind of like buffer the short-term fall in the value of your stock. So your overall portfolio doesn't drop that much or in fact can even go up instead of going down in a recession. At the same time, if you have bonds and in a recession, the bond prices can go up a lot and you can make pretty good profits uh, from owning bonds. So let's talk about uh, what are bond ETFs. Now, the first question is what's a bond? Now, we all know what stocks are if you're listening to my channel, I assume. So when you buy a share of stock, you're buying part of a business. You're becoming the part owner of a business. You get a claim on the business profits. But when you buy a bond, basically you're buying a debt instrument. When you buy a bond, you're lending money to an organization. They'll pay you an interest, a fixed interest. So for example, if you buy a corporate bond, that means you're lending money to the company. The company pays you interest. Until the bond matures, they then pay you back the principal. So same thing, if you buy a government bond, US government bonds are called treasury bonds. So when you buy treasury bonds, uh, they pay you a fixed interest every year on a normal bond. And then after the maturity of the bond, could be 5, 10, 20 years, they pay you back the principal. So basically that's a bond. Now what's a bond ETF? When you buy a bond ETF, you're buying a basket, a portfolio of many, many bonds at one go. And it's a lot easier because you can then buy and sell the bond ETF as easily as you buy and sell stocks. So let's take a look at some bond ETFs. Now, there are many bond ETFs out there, but we're just going to focus on the ones that are managed by BlackRock under the iShares brand. And you can see under the iShares, there are many bond ETFs, all with dif different durations of maturity. So for example, the longest maturity bond ETF is called the TLT, which I will be focusing on more. I'll explain why later on. So this TLT is the 20-year treasury bond ETF. So if you buy this ETF, you're buying a basket of 20-year treasury bonds, which means essentially you're lending money to the US government for 20 years. It matures in 20 years, and in the meantime, they pay you a, an interest rate, a fixed interest, if you will, all right? Now, how do you make money from bonds? It's the same way as making money from buying dividend stocks, except that when you buy a bond, the interest you receive is fixed. It's a fixed interest throughout the maturity. So you make money from the interest, right? We call that income. But you can also make money through capital gain. So if the price of the bond goes up, you make money. Of course, if the price of the bond goes down, then you lose money. So one of the things that you've got to understand about bonds is that uh, the, the, the price of a bond or the bond ETF is determined by interest rates. So the, the law or the, rather the rule, okay, is that bond prices, let me write this down, okay? Bond prices move the opposite of interest rates. That's the most important thing you've got to understand when you invest in bonds or you want to trade bonds, right? So for example, this, this is the interest rates and these are bond prices. So always remember the golden rule. When interest rates go down, bond prices go up. When interest rates go up, bond prices go down. So throughout the whole of this year, what has been happening? Interest rates have been going up. The Federal Reserve have been raising rates up significantly, very high. So as they raise rates up, what, what happens to bond prices this year? Bond prices have collapsed, okay? Now, if you believe that the Fed is going to stop raising interest rates or they're going to slow down raising interest rates or even cut interest rates because of a recession, what's going to happen if they're going to cut interest rates? Bond prices will go up. So, you know, why this relationship? So let me just do my best to kind of explain this. Now, when you buy a bond, you have to understand that uh, there's what we call yield. You look at this word called yield. Now, yield is just a fancy word for interest rate, okay? Yield means interest rate. So yield is always in uh, a percentage, right? So the yield that you get from a bond equals to the interest that's paid from the bond, okay? 
This is also known as a coupon. Now, this coupon is a fixed amount of money that the bond pays you, usually uh, twice a year or could be once a year. All right. And you divide it by the principal that was borrowed or that you lend. Okay. Now, this is also known as the par value of the bond also known as the bond price. Okay, so let me give an example. So uh, the, let's say the principal, okay, that's borrowed, that, that you lend when you buy a bond, the par value is $100, okay? So every $100 that you lend the government, the government pays you a fixed amount. Let's say they pay you a fixed amount of uh, $2. So can you tell me what's the interest rate you're getting? What's $2 divided by $100? That's right, you're getting a 2% interest rate also known as a 2% yield, all right? So let's imagine that you buy this bond right now. And let's imagine that right now, in the market out there, interest rates are going at 2%. Are you happy? Yeah, you're pretty happy because out there, interest rates are 2% and the bond that you bought is giving you 2%. You're pretty happy, okay? Now, what do you think will happen if the the Federal Reserve raises interest rates from 2% to 3% in the market. And now you own this bond. Are you happy? You're not happy. Why? Because, darn it, I'm only getting 2%. But now in the market, people are getting 3%. Damn it, right? So you're not very happy. What will you be inclined to do? You're going to sell your bond, right? Sell the bond, take the money and put it somewhere else to get a higher interest rate somewhere else. So what happens is people start selling the bond. So when people sell the bond, what happens? The price of the bond will go down, right? Because as people sell the bond, supply more and demand, price of the bond goes down. Now, what happens when this denominator goes down? Remember, this is fixed. The $2 is fixed, doesn't change, right? But if this drops to, let's say from 100, it drops to, let's say, you know, $98, for example, what happens to this yield? This yield will go up, all right? In order to compensate for the high interest rate in the market. That's why when interest rates rise, bond prices fall, all right? Now, the opposite happens. If the Fed were to cut interest rates, they cut interest rates from 3%, now they cut it to 2%, okay? And now, let's say your bond, you're getting a yield of 3%. Are you happy? You're happy, right? Because you're getting 3%. And in the market, they're only getting 2%. Ah, suckers. Okay, so a lot of people now want to buy your bond because now your bond is more attractive than the market rate, right? So when people now buy the bond, what happens? Demand, more than supply. So the bond price will go up because more people want to buy the bond. So from $100, now the bond is now being bidded up to, let's say, $105. So when the denominator goes up and this remains fixed, what happens to the yield? The yield goes down. All right, so that explains uh, this entire relationship. Now, if you're confused about what I just shared, don't worry, just remember, interest rates go up, bond price goes down. Interest rates go down, bond price goes up. That's all you gotta know. So again, back to this chart, you can see that there are many, many bond ETFs. For example, you've got the TLT, which is the 20-year uh, treasury bond ETF. You have got the TLH, which is the 10 to 20-year treasury bond ETF. You've got the seven to 10-year uh, IEF, you have got the three to seven year IEI, you know, there, there's so many of them, right? So for me, I'm only interested in buying this one, the TLT. You say, why? Why 20 years? Why not 10 years? Why not seven years? Why 20 years? I'll explain it in a while. But the main reason is because the longer the maturity of the bond, the more sensitive it is to interest rate changes. In other words, the moment interest rates start to drop, this longer term bond, the price will go up more significantly than the medium to shorter term bonds. And I'll show this to you on the charts. Now, ordinarily in the long run, I'm not interested to hold these bond ETFs and I don't normally like to buy them. Why? Because in the long run, they underperform the stock market. In the long run, it's more profitable to be an owner of the business than to just lend money to the business and earn an interest rate. So let me show you, for example, now, again, if you take a look at the, at the long term, right, this is the last 10 years, and you can see what I have here is the SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF. And you can see that in the, in the, over the 10 years, holding stocks 
you would have gained 303% return with dividends included. Notice on the charts, I click adjust for dividends. And this is even with the bear market this year, we are still up 300% over a 10 year period. That's, that's a very good return, right? Now, but if you were to hold bonds, right? So let me show you, first of all, the TLT. This is the TLT. Boom, let me put it in, all right? So the one in orange is the TLT, which is, again, is a 20 year bond ETF. You can see that over 10 years, if you held this ETF, what's your total return, including dividends, you know, 14%. Not exciting, right? Only 14% holding stocks, I get 300%. So who the hell's interested in holding bonds? You know, it's, 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 it's a waste of time, okay? Um, next, how about the IEI? Now, the IEI, sorry, not IEI, the IEF is the 7 to 10 year bond ETF. Let me put that in. And let's see, that's the one in, uh, well, this color over here. You can see that's even lower, right? Next is the IEI. This is the 3 to 7 year bond ETF. Let's put that in. And that's, that's even lower. That's the one in orange, okay? So there are two things I want you to notice here. In the long run, it's better to own stocks because stocks give you uh, a much higher return. Bonds give you a much lower return. Now, but among all the bonds, which one gives you the highest returns? The 20 year bond, the seven to 10 year bond, or the three to seven year bond? The answer is the 20 year bond. You can see the 20 year bond, the one in orange, the TLT, gives you the highest returns among all the other bonds. And that's why I say we are only interested in the TLT. But you may say, Adam, why even buy the bond? I mean, it, it gives such low returns over time. Now, yes, correct. But notice, when is it useful to own these bonds or own the TLT? It is useful during recessions. Because well, what happens during recessions? Now, let me remove the IEI and IEF. So we just focus on the TLT because that gives us, again, the best performance, right? Now, notice what happens during a recession. In a 2020 recession, the stock market ah, goes down, right? But what happens to the TLT? The TLT goes up during a recession, okay? So why does this happen? Because during a recession, when the economy is collapsing, what does the Fed do? The Fed will cut interest rates. So when they cut interest rates, when interest rates go down, bond prices go up. So it's useful to hold bonds only when the Fed is going to cut rates. And that happens in a recession. So in other words, if you anticipate a recession, Fed going to cut rates, then you want to own the bond ETF. Not for the long run, for a while, right? So that when it goes up, it cushions the blow of the stock market going down. And then later you sell your bond ETFs and you just lock in the profits. So this, is, this was back in 2020 recession. Let's look at other recessions. Let's look at the 2008 recession, which was the financial crisis, right? So financial crisis, same thing. Stock market, ah, right? But what happened in the financial crisis? The Fed cut rates, cut rates, cut rates, and the bonds, woo, right? So you can see bonds, by owning bonds, they will go up and they offset the temporary decline in your stock portfolio. That's the beauty of uh, bonds. So let's take a closer look at the TLT ETF. Uh, on the charts, you can see that uh, throughout the entire year, it's been on a downtrend. All right, if you take a look at the last one year, you can see what has happened ever since the Fed uh, raised interest rates uh, dramatically. This bond ETF, in fact, all the bond ETF, the prices have collapsed all the way down, right? But now you can see it's beginning to reverse into a potential new uptrend after being on a downtrend for one year because now the market is beginning to price in that the Fed is going to slow down their rate hikes and that's why you can see this reversal in the TLT price. But of course the question is will this continue? Will the TLT price continue you know going all the way up or will it you know collapse back down? So it all depends on interest rates. Now uh, tomorrow, there'll be a CPI report that's going to be released. So if the CPI report shows that inflation is uh, coming down and the Fed doesn't have to raise rates so aggressively anymore, this will fly up. All right? But of course, this Tuesday, if the report comes in that, oh my God, inflation is 
is not coming down and the Fed has to raise rates more, then this ETF will go down. Now, of course, no one can predict exactly what's going to happen. Uh, so in all disclaimer, I already have a position in TLT. I've mentioned this uh, in my community in uh, the YouTube videos previously that I, I started buying the TLT uh, somewhere here. All right. So it's gone up quite a bit since I bought it. So I already sold half my position to take profit. Uh, the reason is because it was short term overextended. You notice the wave patterns, right? Wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down, wave up, take profit, wave down, buy it back. So I'm waiting for a wave down, waiting for it to retrace to a support level nearer the moving averages to re-enter uh, my, my half position and hopefully take this up uh, if inflation doesn't come in too hot. So again, that's still uh, something we have to look at um, on the Tuesday CPI report. Now again, is a recession inevitable next year? Are, are we definitely predicting a recession? Like I said, no one knows. If you look at all the economists, half say yes, half say no. You know, So to me, I'm not sure if there's going to be a recession. So again, this is just a hedge. I'm going to buy a bit of this. If there's a recession, this is going to make me a lot of money. If there's no recession, then this may not go up, but my stocks will do really well. So it's kind of like a hedge, okay? So the question is, uh, how do you buy this ETF? Simple, just buy it. Okay? Now, if you buy this ETF, it, right now it's, uh, what's the price? $106. So if you buy 100 shares, then it's going to cost you, how much? It's going to cost you $10,600. Now, Another way of gaining exposure to 100 shares without using $10,000 is by using options. Now, some people will think, okay, do I buy a call option? Well, I don't like to buy call options because when you buy a call option, you have to pay a very heavy premium and the price must move enough to cover the cost of the premium. And the problem with options is that they are a decaying asset, which means every day, you're losing time value and it's going to lose value every single day. So buying call options to me, it's like kind of like buying the lottery ticket. Once in a while, you can make a lot of money, but most of the time, buying call options will lose you money. Uh, so I like to use what is known as a bullish synthetic spread strategy. So a bullish synthetic spread is where I buy a call option and sell a put option simultaneously at the same expiration date. So why do I do this? Remember, when you buy a call option, you have to pay money. You have to pay a premium, right? It costs you money. But when you sell a put option, you collect money. So the good thing is when you sell a put option, you collect this money that will pay for your call option. So it will offset so that it's a zero cost trade or minimal cost. And by buying a call and selling a put at the same time, it is exactly the same as owning a hundred shares. It's the same profit and loss profile. The only disadvantage is that if you do this, you don't get the interest. You just get the potential capital gain. But of course, you can also lose money if the price goes down. But if you buy a hundred shares, you get the capital gain or loss plus you get the interest. So that's the only disadvantage of uh, using options. You don't get the interest payments. So let me show you an example of how I'll set this up. Now do bear this in mind that this is not advice for you to buy it or to sell it or to trade it. I'm just sharing this for educational purposes to tell you that, you know, show you how I'm doing it, but please don't do it. Okay, no, don't do it, right? This is just for education only. Uh, the other thing that I have to say is that to me, this is more of a, a short to medium term trade. So I do have a stop loss. It's not a um, fixed stop loss. It is a, it's a mental stop loss, right? Uh, so my stop loss is basically if the price drops below the 50 moving average, I'm going to get out. I'm going to cut my losses on this, okay? Whether I make money or not make money, right? But I'm already in the money, so I, I don't mind, okay? So let me just show you how I set up the trade with that bullish synthetic spread. Okay, so let's imagine I like to buy it right now, for example. I'm not, but let's say I'm going to buy it right now. I'll go to my trade tab and I'll select a date to expiration. Now, it could be anything. So I'm just going to select, for example, um, I'll select you know, 67 days, right? It doesn't really matter. Uh, let's choose 67 days. So I'm going to buy a call option 
and sell a put at the same time. All right. So we're going to buy a call option uh, roughly uh, at or slightly uh, above the current market price. Current market price is 107, as you can see, about 107.5. So I could buy a call option at 108. So I'm going to buy this call option. And to buy the call, it will cost me uh, $3.50, right? To buy the call, I'm going to buy the call, boom, there we go. But then I'm going to sell a put to pay for the call. So I'm going to sell a put. If I sell the put at 108, I collect $4.70, more than enough to pay for 350. Um, so I'm going to sell maybe the 10, I could sell the 106 put, it's fine, sell the 106 put. Okay, there we go. Right, so notice something, uh, by selling the put, I collect $3.65, I earn this premium, right? And I use this to pay $3.50 for the call, so net net, by entering the trade, it costs me nothing. Zero cost. In fact, I get paid a credit of 15 cents times 100 shares per contract. I'm getting $15. I'm being paid to enter the trade. <laughs> Pretty good, right? So that's the beauty of this strategy. Now, what does the profit and loss look like on this trade? Let me just show you the PNL. There we go. This is exactly what it looks like. It is one straight line. And you can see the profit and loss is equivalent to owning 100 shares of TLT. It's, it's equivalent, it's the same thing basically, right? Without time decay, because you're not paying any premium, you're, you're getting paid to enter the trade. So you can see obviously if TLT goes up, right? If it goes up 10% to 11 uh, 6.69, how much money do I make? Now this is per contract, right? One contract is 100 shares, so I will make, um, see this box over here, I'll make $890 if TLT goes up 10%. Now if TLT drops, of course I will lose money, right? So if TLT drops by 10%, I will lose $831 as well. There we go, right? So if it goes up a dollar, I make a dollar. Goes down a dollar, I lose a dollar. It's equivalent to owning 100 shares. The advantage of this is that instead of paying for 100 shares, what is my, the buying power that's blocked in my account? Let me just show it to you. I'm gonna click this. You can see that um, the buying power effect is 2367. So in other words, instead of using uh, $10,600, if I were to buy the shares, I only have to use 2300 in capital to take on the same 100 position. So in other words, by doing this, it, it only, I only need to come up with 20% of the um, notional value of the TLT position. Now, as an important reminder, remember, never, never trade options unless you fully understand all the risk and the intricacies of how to trade options through our option courses. Because options can be very risky if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know how to get in the trade, how to get out of the trade. So please, again, this is not a recommendation to enter any trades. I'm just sharing this for educational purposes. Uh, in this particular trade, for example, like I said, uh, I have a stop loss because it's a trade and not a long-term investment. So my stop loss would be if the price uh, breaks back below the 50 moving average that tells me that the trend is no longer going up, all right? So my cut loss would probably be at about $99 to cut loss. So you can see that if I enter the trade today and I cut loss at $99, $99, I'm prepared to lose, um, I'm prepared to lose $700 and $40 uh, per contract of this trade. Now remember that in any kind of trading, the trouble with people is they always think about how much they can make. But as professional traders, the first thing we think about is not how much we can make. The first thing we think about is how much am I prepared to lose if I'm wrong about the trade. And we can be wrong because we can't predict the future with certainty. Everything is a probability 
everything is a risk to reward ratio. So I just have to ensure that if I'm willing to risk $700, then if it goes up in a recession, I should be able to make a lot more than that. I should be able to make you know, $2,000, $3,000, $4,000. Risking a dollar to make two, three, four dollars that's the trading mentality. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Meantime, may the markets be with you and let's see what happens on Tuesday during the CPI report.